focus that you have written, you have always tried to focus on keeping a non-Western view forward, that is representing India on a global level. So what made you come forward and represent our culture out there and explain our views to the Westerners out there? So, and a furthermore question, in one of the interviews, uh, you were asked ki, uh, what were your influences uh, which helped you in writing your work. You said along with the authors uh, whose books you read, sadhana was one of the most important thing which helped you gain knowledge. So sadhana is uh, very unfamiliar with the youth of the present generation. So how, how do you think that the youth can now reconnect with its roots now? So, the second point, uh, Sadhana means your own practice. So in my case, it's meditation practice. So I've uh, had many, many kinds of meditation systems I learned since I was, uh, and you know, I, I learned them in America actually. Indian meditation systems I learned in America because uh, they were not so well known here. But I learned from uh, Maharishi's transcendental meditation to various tantra meditations, various kinds of meditation. I learned in the US. And I came to India then started learning here also. Uh, so, I would say that whatever is, you have to experiment and then something will click, something will resonate that makes you feel like there is something very big here and I should pursue it in order to uh, tap into it. There is some big reservoir of uh, intelligence, some kind of higher consciousness that I am able to discover. And this is a very unique thing about our civilization. It is not God out there that we are taught. We are, that is also available for people who like it. But there is also a divinity within and higher intelligence within that we have technologies to access. So it is like a Wi-Fi hotspot. So we got a Wi-Fi hotspot that we can learn and you need a protocol and password to access it. Yeah. So it can be done through mantra, it can be done through meditation but there are various techniques that people have discovered it. So we don't say that there is only one Wi-Fi hotspot in Saudi Arabia, everybody has to connect to that. We don't say that. We say that that may be fine, but I can, we can have many, many of them. And it is not considered blasphemy that, you know, you connect with a local Wi-Fi hotspot and you do not dial up to some faraway Wi-Fi hotspot. You follow what I'm saying? So this distinctive quality which says that you don't even have to go to a church or a mosque at all. You can be doing everything on your own. You can be doing it at home. You, know, you can be by yourself and having this connection. This is a very wonderful thing we have. And uh, it means uh, you do not have to succumb to an authority, some institution that is going to tell you and tell you whether you are right, wrong and command over you and control you because you have all the needs within you. You came factory equipped. It was factory installed, like they say Pentium inside, okay. So you've got this thing inside and you just have to learn how to, uh, uh, to uh, access it. And learning how to access what you already have is what the whole sadhana is about, okay. So you don't have to surrender to somebody else somewhere, that is, those paths are also there. But I'm telling you about my own path. So this is how I, this I never left. Uh, since I was a child, I had this kind of a desire in me. And the reason I went to study physics is because I was interested, very deeply interested in philosophy and interested in physics. And I wanted to connect the two and see how uh, science through scientific means I can, uh, I can be become a better philosopher if I understand science also. So that's what I went to study. And then it turned into business opportunity and becoming all, we're getting into all the rat race and all that. And then finally I decided I should reconnect with what really is my calling and then I went back into that mode. So when I decided to go back into that mode, that was my turning point.